Welcome back to another Mobile Centrics Tips and Tricks where I show you either a product or a pair. My name is Derek and I'm going to be showing you a brand new product. This is the iHeater Pro. Out of the box, we've got a nice small design with power cable here and a bunch of different plates for all of the different models that it can do. Also the rear cameras. And here is a unique plate that can be very useful for some repairs like proximity sensors and other things when trying to save face ID. It's got these nice little arms that you can change positions with the slider here, which is super convenient when putting pressure back on a board. And here we can pop out the other plate, which is also convenient for just preheating things without necessarily need anything but a flat surface. And I'm going to be demonstrating it in a practical repair on this iPhone 10. This iPhone 10 has a short somewhere that's not detectable on the top layer, which means we need to separate it, which means I need to sort through and find the corresponding. Here we go iPhone 10, 10s Max, that'll do. This will go here just like so. That's nice, it only heats up where you need it to, which is just past the SIM card tray here on this side. That simply goes in like that. that it clicks down. Something that's really important to note is this little thermocouple here needs to be compressed. It needs to be compressed in between the plate and the ceramic piece here. If it accidentally gets bent out of place, then the machine won't realize how hot things are getting and you can cause some damage. So I need to make sure that this stays over like that anytime the plate is, is installed so it gets compressed and can actually read and gauge the temperature correctly. All right, so let's grab our power supply connector here. We'll connect up the battery and the port, and we're just gonna put power to it, and immediately we get a heavy draw, which means that we definitely have a short. Under our thermal camera, you can see it just starts to get hot from within. Let's see if we can isolate the short there. All right, we'll plug in our cable and flip it on. Take our board, set it down. Hold it down and it'll start to heat up. We go ahead and put pressure here on one spot. And man, it's got the temperature really fast. I'm gonna slice through the sticker here. I heat it up a little bit more. Now that we've got the top board isolated, let's go ahead and connect it back up and see if we get a draw. And we get an immediate draw. So we know that the short here is on the top board. Let's see if we can isolate a component. Ooh. We're getting nice hot right there on that MOSFET, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just the first thing that's taking the power when I inject it through the battery connector. So we need to find out if uh, what side of the uh, one of these main power rails is shorted. So we get normal readings here. But what's happening is this guy here is getting nice and hot. So it converts from PP bat VCC to uh, PP VDD main, which is where I believe the shorts on. So let's go ahead and test uh, for a short on say uh, this this cap here. Let's just test uh, across that cap real quick. See if we've got continuity. Yep, 
Now we know that we've got a short on VDD main. So what we'll do next is inject some power. Let's see if we can find the glowing culprit. So we'll switch over to our thermal camera here. I'm gonna start by injecting less than a volt into VDD main. And let's put it right here on this side of the uh, this top capacitor here. And we get a nice little hot spot over here. Let's try that one more time. Something's glowing right over in this area. Something's glowing down here. So I'm gonna test on, let's test off of these points here and see if we get anything to glow over here. Right away, we get a glow. Looks like this cap here, maybe. Okay, here we go. See right here, it opens itself up to the air every time. So probably this cap right here. All right, and our short is gone. There's the ground here. And here's the line. And we're getting a normal reading, so. I'll just carefully wick off all of the pads. Prep it all nice for new solder balls and get rid of all of the thermal paste as well. And I'll have a link right up here to another video that shows kind of my reballing method with the spacers that you can see here in gold that allow me to do this process as smoothly as I can. Now before we continue, I want to show you all of the features that this has. You can see that the exit button one click is just to exit whatever you're in. And long press will change it between Chinese and English. You've got the dial here on the side to adjust the function, the temperature, or the countdown adjustments. And then the OK button, a single click is just to signify OK. And a long press will start and stop. So here at the top, you can see that I've highlighted the function selection. So if we go into that, you can see that it's got board, CPU, and screen. So if we go into the board, you can see that it's selected the iPhone 10 through 11 Pro Max, or we can go through the 12, 12 Pro Max, or we can create our own custom, customized setting. You can see the presets here, 170 Celsius, which you can change for a, and for a runtime of 130 seconds, or we can switch it over to the 12, 12 Pro Max, you can see now it's at 200 degrees Celsius at 120 seconds. We can go to the temperature and we can change the temperature to wherever we'd like it. We can adjust the time to increase or decrease the amount of time that the heat plate will be running once it's at full temperature. We can change it to be a, continual, a continuous heating instead of having a timer. And we can also gauge the actual increase of heat and decrease we can actually see it go up in temperature and down in temperature for example here you can see it starting to rise there slowly in temperature let's get to the point where i wouldn't want to touch it too much longer with my thumb when i do a long press on the okay it turns the fan on and then automatically you start to see the temperature start to drop as that fan is now pulling air through and cooling down the plate. So it'll continue to cool down until it gets to, I think around 45 or 50 degrees Celsius. Overall, very intuitive with the amount of different things you can do. And the fact that it has the ability to automatically start cooling the board down at a specific time with these clamps that hold the board in place as it cools down. There's a lot of things about this that just other basic heat plates just don't have. This is definitely a step up in the right direction. Now back to the video. All right, now let's watch them heat up and, uh, and melt here in the next uh, 10 seconds or so. We should see the solder start to melt. And there's the beep saying we're at temperature. Now the heat needs to transfer all the way through up into the top of the board. And then we'll see it start to melt. And there we go. It's already starting, so I'm just gonna turn the machine off. The residual heat will make them all melt. It looks like I've got a little bit bridging right here that I've gotta go address. Otherwise, we are good. Flux 
that's around the border here. All right, we will put back the board here. pretty sure that things are lined up and that it's settled. I'm gonna let it cool down so I can look at it under a microscope and see if we've got good connections. And what I'll probably end up doing is coming back and positioning these little arms to kind of give it pressure. I'll he reheat it back up to temperature, turn it off and leave the, e the, uh, the pressure engaged while it cools down so that I know that I have a solid joint all the way around. So this is becoming uh, probably my favorite heating platform out of all of them. All right, it's cold enough to take off now. Now here under the microscope, I can definitely see the solder balls. They're in good position, but they're still a little too tall. They haven't quite pancaked enough to where I'm satisfied. I really like the way that it's positioned and everything. So now we're gonna take these clamps here, and put pressure in plenty of different spots here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on, let it get back up to temperature, and I can cool it down and turn it off. All right, we're at temperature now. Look, I've got the, uh, the countdown here actually going. But you can adjust that time, but let's see what happens at the end of the seconds there. Five seconds through four, three, two, one. And it automatically starts to cool down for me. That's pretty cool. Right. Let's take this guy off now. And I really like the way that that gap is uniform all the way across on all sides. looks as good as factories. And as you can see here, they are completely gone. You can't even see the pancakes. We know that it's nice and tight. Now this has become my favorite tool by far for the iPhone sandwich boards. There will be a link in the description where you can get this tool along with all the others that you see in this video. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.